afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday, uh, July 5th, 2020, and I'd like to give you a little introductory tour of the James Arnold Mansion, the new home of the New Bedford Museum of Glass. Where we're standing now at 427 County Street, you can see the original um, cast iron fence and the house behind us. We'll take a little walk down the, the pathway here and I'll tell you a little bit about the house and the, um, the residents here. This house was built in 1821 by James Arnold. He was a wealthy merchant, uh, came from Providence, Rhode Island, to work for the Roach family. Uh, the Roaches founded the whaling industry here in the 18th century, uh, enormously wealthy. Uh, he worked for William Roach Jr. and um, in 1807 he married William Roach Jr.'s daughter, uh, Sarah. Uh, built the house in 1821, raised his family here. It was originally a federal style mansion and I'll show you a picture of how it looked in 1821. But when Roach, uh, when um, James Arnold died in 1868. He left the house to his nephew, William J. Roach. And William is particularly interesting to us because he was the president of the Mount Washington Glass Company, the famous local glass company here. And I have a piece inside of uh, Mount Washington Art Glass that I'll show you. But let's take a walk down the pathway and we'll look a little more closely at the house itself. You can see the brick facade, original facade, up to the second floor when William J. Roach inherited the mansion from James Arnold. He built the third floor, uh, the mansard roof third floor, that sloping, uh, sloping roof floor, to accommodate his, his large family uh, who lived here through the 1870s and the 1880s. As I mentioned, um, William J. Roach was um, active in many industries. He was actually the second mayor of New Bedford in 1852. And um, when, he, when he passed away, the, the house um, stayed in the Roach family for uh, a couple of decades. And then in 1919, it was purchased by a private social club, the Wamsutta Club. And at that time, they added the, the north and the south wing, so they expanded the building considerably. And um, um, there are meeting rooms, uh, there is a, a restaurant, kitchen, dining rooms, and we'll, um, we'll get a quick peek of that when we, when we go inside. So let's go in. Let's go in through the front door and uh, take a look at how this house originally looked, and then uh, see what William J. Roach did with it in the 1870s, Victorianizing it uh, considerably. So. This is a portrait of James Arnold, and when he built the house in 1821, this is what the uh, facade of the house looked like. Um, neoclassical with the columns across. You can see one small extension here, but in the um, 1919 and then early 20s, it, the building was expanded considerably. Uh, you can see the the fence that we just came through um, in front. 
So again, um, Arnold left the mansion to his nephew, William J. Roach. And this is a photograph showing what William J. Roach did to the building. Uh, you can see High Victorian. It's got a corner turret with a tower here and the mansard roof, the third floor that Roach added in the early 1870s. Uh, the beech trees are still standing. You can see one here and the other large one on the other side. Now, as I, as I mentioned, um, William J. Roach was very active with the glass industry when the New Bedford Glass Works was founded here in the 1860s. It was a brand new state-of-the-art glassmaking facility. Um, it failed very quickly uh, within a couple of years um, and was incorporated in 1871 as the Mount Washington Glass Works. William J. Roach was one of the founding officers of the company, and in the 1880s and 90s, they became very famous for fine art glass. This is an example of hand-blown, hand-decorated art glass that's typical of the type of work that was being made here in New Bedford. Uh, the city was called the art glass capital of the country uh, for several decades, and they introduced many different uh, designs and patterns and and types of glass that were extremely popular during those years. Um, the company under Roach's uh, leadership was uh, never very large. They employed about 250 workers. Um, it was just one of many businesses that Roach was involved with. And he wasn't too um, concerned, apparently, about making money with the company. There is a uh, Dunn and Company credit report that was um, written in the 1880s that talks about how, although the company didn't make money, they had some very, very wealthy um, people in the company. And um, Roach, they, they specifically mentioned Roach and said that they thought he was worth between two and three million dollars. So um, they were comfortable with the works. It's just that it was a very conservative firm. They didn't expand the way they might have. So they were never able to meet all of the orders that were coming in. Um, in 1880, William J. Roach was involved with founding the Pearpoint Manufacturing Company, which was a silver plate um, firm, it initially intended to supply the metal um, fittings for different glass pieces, the bases for the baskets, uh, the caps for the salt shakers, that sort of thing. Uh, became actually more successfully financially than the glass company. And in 1894, it absorbed the Mount Washington Glass Company and it all became uh, Pearpoint. So um, Roach was a founding, um, founding officer of that company as well and very involved with both, both industries. We can imagine this house filled with beautiful Victorian art glass when um, when William J. Roach and his family worked here, or lived here rather. Uh, that is where the Glass Museum um, is, being, um, is being built and established. We hope to open there later this summer. And the um, elevator for the, uh, for the mansion getting down there will be in this area right here. Um, but you can see a little bit of the scale of the, of the um, Wamsutta Club facilities here, there, the private uh, private social club that still occupy the uh, the ground floor here at the mansion. Um, as we finish up our installation downstairs, uh, we're putting carpet into the area that will be the gift shop. We're still doing some painting. Um, we have the electrical work to do with the um, with the display cases, um, but. Once that work is a little um, further progressed, we'll continue this tour with a, um, a walk downstairs through the new Glass Museum galleries. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again um, from the New Bedford Museum of Glass.